pastor that blessed me. Saying that, Peter learned some things about himself after Jesus died. You will learn some things about yourself after people leave your life. Peter learned, and I said the other day, that, he, that, 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 that he, too much, he was doing too much talking and not enough trusting. He learned that he had too much conversation and not enough character, too much inter external show and not enough internal development. So on the weekend of the resurrection, there was doubt, there was discouragement, there was depression, despair. All of these had run free. Everybody was infected by the death of Jesus. Everybody was messed up. Everybody was infected. And here's a person I want to talk about this morning, and I want to get to the end of her. Everybody was infected except a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary Magdalene was the least one of this entire story that you would think would have something that anybody would want to talk about because Mary Magdalene was not a favorite in the Bible. She didn't get her reputation from being one of the great spokeswomen of the Bible or anything like that. She, she had been uh, said to have been a follower of Jesus, but she had a very painful past. As a matter of fact, they had said that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, and it hasn't been proven, it wasn't proven until like the year of 1969 through the, through the Roman Catholic Church that, that the whole uh, facade of Mary Magdalene was just that. It was just a speculation. No one was ever able to prove who she was. So this woman died with the reputation of being a prostitute and a prostitute who was following Jesus after he changed her life. She had a reputation for being able to run men down. Uh, Y'all don't get this, do you? But after he changed her life, she followed him. So can you imagine having somebody follow you? I don't care whether they're tweeting or what. Following you who has a messed up reputation. And she took it to her grave, and it wasn't until 1969 that the church has proven that what they said about her was not who she was. They had the wrong Mary. Some of you may die before you clear your name. Just run with him. I said run with him. You may die with a bad reputation. Run with him. Your God is able. She had been redeemed from a painful past. He changed her life. People don't have a problem with you until you will start to affect the lives of other people. Some of you will never experience enemies until you start to change and affect the lives of other people. Some of you have, don't, don't have really any enemies right now. You're, you're pretty popular and most people always want you around because you have not affected anyone else's life yet. You have not been a part of the change of anybody else's life. Most people know that they can always get you to do what they want, but can you get them to do what you want? Can you get them to try and trust Jesus? The women, when Jesus died, let me tell the story how cool it is. Some, some of our young people here I won't talk to. Um, some of our guests, you know, I like to talk to kids a lot. Here's what happened. So, so Jesus died, right? And these la this lady named Mary. Um, Mary. Billy, what's your kid's name? Grace and? Dalen and Grace? Okay, Dalen and Grace, y'all got to help me. If I get a little long or get boring, raise your hand and I'll stop. I'm for, for real, I will. Just say, okay, this is cool, Pastor Rush. Let's practice it. Raise your right hand. Okay, that will mean sit down, okay? Now, both of them mean hallelujah, so uh, you got to, if you, if you get in a praise, just do. So, so here's what happens. These, these ladies, Mary Magdalene and some of her friends, Jesus said, when I die, I'm going to get up from the grave. And everybody was like, yeah, that'll be a good one. So he died, all right? Now, before he died, everybody had come together and they were saying how much they loved him. Now he died and he says, in three days, I'm, I'm going to get up, you know? And so this lady had some of her friends with her, and they were going now to the burial place of Jesus. And you ever heard about this story? You ever, you ever heard this story, Grace? Okay, yeah. So, 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 so they're headed out to see where Jesus was buried. And, and they had searched everywhere and gone everywhere and looked uh, among themselves for, for, for people to probably go with them. And, and sometimes if, if the Lord has never done anything for you, people don't understand why you're in such pursuit of him. There was a, there was a king there. There was a, a ruler of the, of the city, of the place. His name was Pilate. And he had, he, he had 
dispatch some guards to watch the grave. Can you imagine going by a grave and men are standing around a grave? Why are they standing around a grave? Well, not only do they stand around the tomb, but they secured the tomb, they sealed the tomb, and they placed the guards watching it. They put a big rock over it. They put some guys beside it, and then they sealed it to make sure that they couldn't open it because Jesus said he was going to get up. And they put a big rock there, put some guys watching it, and put a seal over it because they believed that Jesus was not going to get up. They put a big rock over it, put some men to watch it, and a seal. It sounds like to me, and I'll say it every week, sounds like to me Pilate believed that Jesus was going to get up. Why else would you put a big rock over it, two men to watch a grave, and seal it up? Sometimes the people that condemn you the most really believe that what you say is God. Why else would they spend time following you, tweeting you, searching you, seeing who's following you? Why else would they say things about you unless they really believe somewhere? But, I'm sorry, there I go to, I'm talking a little loud. Somewhere behind your death, there is a resurrection. Oh, why don't you touch somebody and tell them, I used to be dead. No, you had a dead job last year. You had a dead friendship last year. You had dead weight last year. And people now are still watching you because... So when the women got there, they couldn't, they couldn't move the stone. It was too heavy. They couldn't fight the guards because they were ladies. And it was still too tight for them to break it. But when they got there, here was some cool information. There was an angel sitting on top of the tomb. I told him the other night, if I had walked up there and saw an angel sitting on the tomb, that would have been enough for me. I would have walked up and said, this is none of my business. If Jesus want to get up, he can get up. If they want to steal it by him. So the angel walks up there, and the angel, they walk up there, and the angel's sitting on the tomb. And can you imagine? <laughs> you go into the grave, and you get to the grave, you're going to visit. And on top of the grave, you know, tombstones, what we call them. It's on top of the grave, you got an angel. I don't know if he was, he probably wasn't like eating some Skittles or nothing like that. <laughs> the Bible didn't say that. I did. Okay, so don't go. But well, can you imagine? Angel just, just chilling. And ladies walk up and he goes, hey, don't be afraid. I know who you're coming here for. I know you're coming in to see Jesus. Y'all got to help me say calm down. Uh, no. <laughs> I know you're coming to see Jesus. But he is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. I'm talking to somebody this morning whose career has been buried. I want to bring you a word. I, I'm off the sermon for a minute. God wanted me to give you a word this morning. It's going to rise. That's not just talk. Try it. I'm talking to somebody who's felt like your life has failed. God says you get another second chance. Another second? Yes, another second chance. You blew your second second chance. You blew your fourth second chance. I'm going to give you a 50th second chance. He said, because if I'm for you, I'm more than the world against you. So I got to make sure you get up. If I don't make sure you get up, I'll be on their side. If God doesn't change your situation, that means he's on the enemy's side. Wow. Wow. Mary Magdalene, the least of them, was told by the angel at the tomb real quick, come on in. 
and see where he was. You don't go to a grave to look for people to be gone. We're accustomed to putting people in the grave. We're not accustomed to seeing where they got out. But how did this happen? I thought you said, Pastor Russ, that the, 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 the tomb was there and it was sealed and there were two guards. Well, before they got there, the Bible says that suddenly there was a shaking. Now, most people aren't around you when suddenly happens. No, you used to drink, you used to party, you used to go out, you were, you were hell on wheels. But suddenly, it might have been one morning at 4 o'clock, it might have been one evening at 5.30, but suddenly something happened. The Bible said suddenly there was a shaking, and during the shaking, everything was there except the tomb. When God shakes things in you specifically, nobody around you might be touched but your stuff. Specific. There was a specific shaking. 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 There was an individual shaking. God spoke directly to that too. God spoke directly to that too. Some of you get jealous because people you're around, you don't understand how they made it out. You were standing right next to them. For just a moment, he spoke specifically to their situation, to their too. You need to start celebrating somebody else's shaking. That means the forecast has been given and there's some shaking coming on your block. You're sitting by somebody right now that refuses to be shaken. That's all right. You shake. Angel told them when they got there, don't be afraid. Why were they afraid? People become a little afraid when you go from bad to good. So he's sitting there. There had been some shaking going on. I want to ask you a question this morning before I take my seat, before I, before I do what God wants me to do this morning. Are you in a personal earthquake? You're trying not to cry, but... He's shaking tears out of you now. You're trying your best to be mean, but he's shaking love out of you. I don't know about you, but I've tried to be mean. I've tried to be unry. I've tried to be selfish. I've tried to ignore people. I've tried to stay in my closet. I've tried to stay by myself. But every time I try to isolate myself and be my own self, God shakes ghosts out of me. He shakes anointing out of me. Sometimes I say, Lord, leave me alone. God said, no, if I don't shake you, the devil's going to break you. Touch somebody say, he's shaking me. And God can't make you until he shakes you. Because until he shakes you, he can't break you. Most of us are afraid of being broken because it took us so long to get this hard. It took us this long to get this hard. And so God says, okay, since you've been so tough and so bad, why don't I just break you and shake you so that I can remake you? Now, when you're broken, I'm promising you the environment that you came from, the world you were a part of, they are still calling you back. And sometimes you might go back, but when you go back, this time you go back new. And now you start to infect the atmosphere. You change things. And then it's going to become very obvious. It's not that you weren't invited to most things. It's just that now you don't fit into the places you were invited. 
Can you give somebody a high five? I don't know if shaking hands is good this morning or not. Some of you might right now, being a Christian, start to wonder, well, I don't get to do as much as I used to do because what you do now doesn't require what you used to do. You don't understand that what comes to you now comes to you by faith. You ain't got to hustle no more. You ain't got to fight no more. You don't have to fall out and you don't have to show yourself. You don't have to do what you do to get what you get now. Now you're learning how to just lean and depend on Jesus. <laughs>